Hey everyone, it's me, your old pal, your old friend, your old confidant, Ryan. Biomutant, the Kung Fu Fable, Open World, or what I like to call the game about violent furry boys released last week to a rather mixed reception. I talked about it in my own review that despite its many issues, I enjoyed running around smacking the town and riding the creature that looks like it's in pain just by its very existence. Check out that ass. If I had to see it, so do you. We'll see how this video goes, because I haven't had any caffeine yet for the day, so. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about Buy Mutant here again. That means you should subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and if you don't, well, you can subscribe anyway and pressure me to do the kind of content that you like, or at least you might like more. Biomutant's first patch is here, and as of this recording, it is only on PC right now, and Experiment 101 has said that the new patch will be out on consoles shortly. As such, this likely won't be a fully comprehensive list of what the console-specific fixes will be, but if for some reason the new patch is out on console before this video is out and I haven't exported it or anything yet, you can expect a random addition somewhere in the middle of this video to address that. Like, I don't know, like right here. So let's get into the patch notes here, and then we'll discuss. There's a lot here, so I won't read all of it. The first two bits here are PC-specific, and they're rather self-explanatory. mainly addresses crashes on some AMD graphics cards. With that, let's move to one of the biggest points of contention with this game. It's opening moments. It's opening sequence. It's rather slow. And I knew that too when I played it. I felt it. It takes quite a bit of time to get moving. Experiment 101 has made a lot of edits to the tutorial section, it seems, and the pacing of dialogues to have that sequence move a bit faster than you probably remembered if you just played it last week. The tutorial area, in order to improve the pacing of early parts of the game, we've edited dialogues to be shorter. We've also added in more enemies and loot to these areas to better represent the experience later in the game. Added more early enemy encounters. Added missing loot in empty trenches outside of Jagni Fortress. Added item drop chance for Bunker 101 crates. Updated best before memory to decrease the distance between the no-nos and the Pensai tree. Remove some parts of out of date and best before's dialogues to improve pacing. Remove multiple dialogue fragments to shorten tutorial area length, removed some parts of Goop and Gizmo's dialogues to improve pacing, removed multiple camera presentations to improve pacing. Personally, I think some people, including myself, just wanted them to give the players the ability to skip the intro because it's kind of a slog, at least if it's a new character, a new playthrough with a new character. As of right now, the tutorial section or opening moments takes about two to three hours to get through if you're playing through the first time. New Game Plus playthroughs do skip the intro, of course, and go right to the Tree of Life, but the issue is on if you want to experiment with like a new character or maybe a new class, it would appear this is more of a compromise kind of position of making the tutorial more succinct as opposed to removing it entirely if the player chooses to skip it. Something you'll notice throughout a lot of these patch notes is that the pacing of the dialogue is something that will continue to come up throughout. So quicker dialogue and more fighting and loot to summarize, gotta get our furry boys in the action quicker. Which brings us to the next portion of the patch notes I want to discuss, this one having to do with narration and dialogue. Dialogue and narrator. Reduce the amount of gibberish spoken before the narrator starts translating. Added dialogue setting toggles for gibberish and narrator, allowing players to select if they want to hear the narrator, the gibberish, or both when talking to NPCs. Fixed narration and gibberish playing silently and producing an awkward pause when each corresponding volume setting is set to zero instead of skipping the sound entirely. Remove the text delay animation when either gibberish or narration is disabled. The other thing I think everyone is kind of complaining about, seems to be a bit of a consensus over, is the narrator. Uh, I had a suspicion a while ago before the game came out that the narrator might be a bit of annoying or annoying once it came out the game and when we all played the full game it, it has been <laughs> considering the quantity of the narrator's dialogue it gets kind of irritating to hear them comment on everything you do every little thing yes you can turn the frequency down and you should but again the narrator will always have some kind of dialogue here it looks like you can now completely silence the narrator and only hear the gibberish when talking to npcs now I do assume that this means it's only going to be subtitles if you choose to do that because otherwise you would have no clue what anyone is saying and some general improvements here and there to keep the dialogue moving at a pretty quick pace. Speaking of quick, let's run through these next two points. For those of you who love pain, there is now an extreme difficulty setting. I tried to play the game on hard mode on stream with a new class, new character, and uh, I'm going to be honest, it, it did not go well, very well for me. As always, options are options are options. If I might not use them, that's okay because someone else will. And then New Game Plus now gives you access to all class perks. Next part we have is items and loot. From what I can see here, a lot of these are probably going to be a bit more subjective, as in maybe you didn't take issue with it, but it seemed a bit off enough 
where it is addressed here in this patch. Items and loot increase chances that items found have a level requirements closer to the player's actual level when found. Players will still be able to find items with higher level requirements, but player level is now taken into account. Removed common item loot drops from high level loot crates. Reduce the amount of healing items that the player will find from crates and defeated enemies. Increase base damage from melee bodies, handles, and add-ons by approximately 5%. Reduce base damage from ranged bodies, muzzles, and grips by approximately 5%. Fix resistance stats not being applied for crafted gear when adding add-ons. Reduce gear add-on resistance and critical chance bonuses. Ensure that the quest reward, the diver's helmet, will no longer drop as random loot. Remove slots from all protective suits. Again, maybe I'm, I'm I'm suspecting wrong here, but I suspect that the changes outlined here will be a bit more subjective depending on the player. I don't know if this will affect you specifically, or if you just start up the game for the first time, or if you'll even notice, but likely this will provide further balancing in case you did want to try a higher difficulty, like maybe the new extreme one. I'm going to stay away from that one, but you could try it. <laughs> uh, the most notable one for me would be finding items that are over-leveled. Oftentimes you would find an item and it would be a crazy high level compared to yours. Funny thing I will say is that I have that diver's helm in my inventory and I had no idea what it was for the longest time and I was so confused by it because I couldn't sell it or get rid of it or or chuck it. I anticipated it was so critical to the structural foundation of the game that it would probably break it if I got rid of it. So that's the only reason that it was there. Sound is the next one I want to talk about. It doesn't appear to be as expansive as the rest of the list here by comparison, but there's clearly an attempt to address some of the issues players had with the sound effects, including myself. It just didn't have that ferocity and weight to it that you kind of expected and wanted. We'll have to wait and see if it makes a big difference. Sound. Updated melee sound effects across the board. Updated mount sound effects. Volume. Added sound effects for tribe war trebuchet. Updated sounds when the player lands inside HQ after being launched from the catapult or a catapult. Now there are a lot of combat tweaks, so instead of reading them all out loud to you verbatim, I'm just gonna flash them on the screen here and encourage you to check out the patch notes for yourself if you wanna read the specifics. But a lot of them are animation fixes and adjusting camera angles and tweaking some things that would seemingly unintentionally happen in the gameplay. Like probably an ability you you use not being able to do critical damage. I have trouble saying words, which is why I hesitated. Like I said, there's a decent amount of combat tweaks and tuning, so I would definitely look into it more in depth here in the patch notes. And yeah, I am officially stalling for time while the rest of the images pop on screen. It's a perfect time to recount a story from my uh, youth. You see, when I was a little boy, Quests and achievements. Fixed game progress not being able to reach 100% due to unavailable quest states within a single playthrough. Fixed back to roots quests sometimes not being completed. Adjusted tribe war flow to be more robust. Fixed the old world gadgets trophy correctly unlocking after finding old world gadgets. As of right now, I know this from experience that some of the achievements and trophies are glitched and will not unlock. It is personally preventing me from getting the platinum trophy and you know what that means. I'm gonna have to kill Calabisto. Sorry, buddy. Now, quickly, uh, I'm going to get through the last two sections here, though I'm not covering everything. Again, you should look at the patch notes if you want to know specifics or just play it and, and see how you feel. The world. Remove several area objectives from suburbia as they are tied to the Moog quest and could cause confusion. Replaced a couple of NPC tasks that didn't work as intended. Added missing no rain volume to the sewer entrance at oil fields to prevent indoor rain effect. Subnautica station is now fully covered by correct post-process volume. Improved look for indoor puddles. Fixed issue where the player was able to fall through the world in Myriad Fortress, fixed area where the player was able to fall through the world in Ankati Outpost. Some miscellaneous ones, disable fast travel when jumping from water, fixed issue where the unspeakable hand Wong Fu would cause NPCs to fall through water surfaces instead of drowning, fixed issue with rocket NPC being stuck in the air after explosion, fixed issue with rocket NPC explosion particle effects popping when being removed, adjusted free fall duration needed for mounts to trigger hard landing, fixed attribute check labels and puzzles incorrectly being displayed as loot chance instead of intellect. Fixed infinite jump while using photo mode. And of course, there's a lot more I didn't go over, but I think you can play it for yourself or look into the patch notes yourself, and I encourage you to do so just to check it out. There's a lot of general bug fixes, like preventing you from falling through the world and visuals not being rendered properly. Again, some of these things you may not have even noticed or cared about or even experienced. I, I know I didn't experience a ton of those, or at least when I was playing, I didn't experience them, but this does begin to address a lot of the issues with the game. 
Personally, I would expect probably a few more fixed type patches before they start really hammering away at larger player requests or additions to the game, such as uh, a fan request that they get a lot, apparently adding more wildlife and whatnot, something like that. I wonder if it will probably have to wait until the next gen upgrade because per IGN's performance review video, which you should also check out if you have time, none of the game's versions on the various platforms are going to reliably hit 60 FPS for a long stretch of time or long stretches of time. It's a big first patch for Biomutant, all things considered, and it means there's quite a bit to parse through if we want to determine what worked for it and what doesn't or still isn't working. THQ does have a Discord for Biomutant set up where you can submit suggestions and fixes and bugs directly to them, and the Twitter account has been pretty active in responding to players regarding their concerns. So clearly Biomutant isn't going anywhere. Not that it should, but it it's, it's not, and the post-launch support will continue. As I said in my review, I will repeat here, given these notes, Biomutant is a mixed bag overall. I enjoyed it quite a bit, though I do have many issues with it, but it's a fun game and no doubt it's going to attract a good amount of players despite the issues it has and it already has with the repetition of its gameplay. At the end of the day, all that matters is if it's fun and if you enjoy it. Everything else is irrelevant. Don't listen to anybody else. There's some charm to it and some great kernels of ideas in this game and I'm excited to see more updates and additions to the game and more fixes. Until then, please continue to follow this channel for more Bimu and RPG content and also give the video a thumbs up if you like the video and give it a thumbs down if you didn't. And above all, remember to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more or want to pressure me to make better content. All in all, I'll talk to you all soon and I love you. Maybe.